All right, so Tom Abbott is the founder and award-winning sales optimization company, Soko Sales Training, a certified speaking professional, that's a CSP, and the 14th president of Asia Professional Speakers Singapore, ABSS. Woo! Woo! He has delivered hundreds of motivational sales, keynotes, kickoffs, presentations, workshops in over 10 countries throughout Asia Pacific and is passionately committed to optimizing the sales and processes of organizations worldwide. Now, Tom is also the author of the Soho Solution and Social Selling and has host the popular Selling in Asia podcast. Now, today he's here to speak about the state of sales in 2020. How many of you are interested? You want to know the state of sales in 2020 and how to get booked? Yes, you have it all. You have content. You, you have your product but you want to know how you're going to get booked in 2022. All right, so if you are ready out there and all of you here in the ballroom, let's put our hands together and welcome Tom Abbott. Yeah, make some noise. Maps, yay. Woohoo. Over to you, Tom. Thank you so much for that great introduction. Can we please give our MC a big round of applause as well, please? Well done, you're doing a great job. And I want to say a big thanks to all of you for inviting me to speak at your convention this year. My gosh, it's been such a long time since we've all been together. I wish I could be there personally. As many of you know, I'm from Canada, based in Singapore. But today, right now, I'm coming to you live from Medini Iskandar in Malaysia. So I'm a lot closer than you might think. So I'm actually here with my family uh, for the weekend here at our condo in uh, near Putri Harbor in Medini Iskandar. So we're at least in the same country. All right, I am really pumped. Oh, it's so good to see you all, my friends. Can I get you guys to wave? I wanna see you all. I wanna feel some energy from that ballroom. Oh, you guys are looking good. I wish I was there in person. Can't wait to see you all again. Now, the last time I spoke at MAPS, I think I spoke at MAPS convention in 2017 or 2018. So it's been a very long time, but I'm thrilled to be back here again. And what I want to share with you right now for the time that we have together is the state of sales in a pack. Hands up if you can see my screen, everybody. Can you see my screen? Awesome, you can see the slides, perfect. So I wanna talk about the state of sales in APAC and what's going on right now. Specifically, I wanna share with you how you can get booked, what you need to get booked. Now, here's how we're gonna do it. I think I've only got about 30 minutes or so, okay? So what I usually do in my sessions is I like to have an 80-20 split where maybe 80% of my session I'm sharing some content and then 20% I turn it over to you for a Q&A session where you can ask me anything. Today, because you're my fellow speakers, and I love you all, I want to flip that, I want to invert that, turn that upside down. I want this to be 20% content and 80% of back and forth interaction with you. Because I know at conventions, a lot of the value is in the discussions, the conversations, all right? A lot of the content I'm going to share, you can see it on my website and I can share some stuff with you afterwards. But I want to be here today to answer your specific core questions so that you leave here with strategies on what you can do right away to get your next, or for some of you, your first booking. So if that sounds good, please say yes. And I want to hear you, all of you. I want to hear you say yes. Go! Yes! yes. All right. Perfect, my friends. So let me start with a quick rundown of the state of sales and what's going on right now. So look, virtual selling is here to stay. A lot of people are asking me, hey Tom, the whole COVID situation seems to be over. So can we go back to selling face to face? Well, the answer is kind of, sort of. Now look, I've been doing a lot of research for the last couple of years since this COVID situation started. And as an international sales speaker and trainer running an award-winning sales training company, I've had the opportunity to speak with a number of sales leaders across APAC. And what they're telling me is that virtual selling is here to stay, at least from a hybrid perspective. Now, how many of you, show of hands, have started meeting with some customers face-to-face -face in their office? Show of hands. Excellent. 
And show of hands, how many of you are also speaking with, meeting with customers on Zoom or Teams or any other platform? Hands up. All right. So we're all doing kind of a hybrid approach to selling. Now, virtual selling is here to stay because, guess what? People like to work from home, <laughs> okay? Now, not everybody, but what we're finding is most people still prefer to either work exclusively from home or part-time from home, some sort of a hybrid work arrangement. So what that means is your customer is working from home, which means you need to be able to sell remotely, virtually, or digitally. So what I want to share with you is an overview. Seven trends that are shaping the future of sales. Now, we don't have time to go into them. I'm going to focus on one in particular, but I want to give you a sense as to what my research is showing the trends now that are going to be shaping the future of sales. Now, when we talk about the future of sales, for you as professional speakers, trainers, coaches, authors, etc., it's the future of your industry. So this is what, what's going to help you get more bookings. So let's just jump right in. Here are the seven trends. Virtual selling is good for sellers, but guess what? It's even better for your buyers. They prefer it. Sales organizations are preventing sellers from putting buyers first. So I'm going to focus on that, how you can have a buyer first mindset. Now we're also finding that organizations and leaders, professionals like you, have to prepare for an ongoing hybrid world. There are also some sales technologies that are blocking deals. And sales technology is providing the key pathway to building trust. And sorry, I meant to say sales behaviors. There are certain things that sellers are doing that's actually blocking deals. Uh, evolving sales ops roles are reinforcing data-driven strategies. And finally, buyers and sellers are finding greater connection on LinkedIn. But what I want to share with you right now specifically, and I want to dive deeper into this, is that at focus of number two, that sales organizations are preventing sellers from putting buyers first. So let me talk a little bit about what this means. So I'm going to share my screen again and uh, share a little stat with you all that I think you're going to find interesting. So let me ask you right now. How many of you, by show of hands, how many of you believe that you put your buyer, your customer, first? <laughs> show of hands, if you genuinely believe you put your customer, your buyer, first. Okay, thank you. You can put your hands down. And for those of you that didn't put your hands up, that's okay. I appreciate your honesty, okay? Good job. All right, so let me share with you something here that I think you're going to find really interesting. So what we're seeing is that 61% of sellers, so 6 out of 10 sellers, say that they always put the buyer first. Hmm, interesting. I wish the number was higher, but they say, okay, 61%. Well, only 29% of buyers agree, <laughs> okay? So less than one third of our customers actually believe that we are putting them first. And that's a real problem. That's a real challenge because they're not going to trust us. And what we're finding is that putting the buyer first is an absolute must. So what does that actually look like? How do you put your buyer first? And let me remind you that by putting your buyer first, you're going to be able to close more deals, get more bookings, get more engagements. So what does that actually look like to put your buyer first? Well, you've got to first learn, then define. Now, for those of you, feel free, take some notes, write this down, get your phone out, and start taking the photos of this slide. Because this here that I'm sharing with you is gold. There are two particular slides that I really invite you to pay close attention to. This is the first one. This is the buyer first philosophy. So be sure to get those handphones out. So learn, then define. What does that mean? Active listening is a critical foundation for the buyer seller relationship. So if you want to get good at sales, if you want to close more bookings, have a philosophy of active listening. So listen attentively to your prospect, find out what's going on, 
ask a lot of questions, be curious, avoid the temptation of pitching your services or showing them your demo reel and going, well, what do you think? Do you want to book me? It's really less about you selling yourself and more about you asking your prospect questions about their team, about their organization, about their event, what are the specific challenges they're facing, what have they tried to do to solve those problems, et cetera, et cetera. So being really curious and learning about your prospect, that's gonna help you build trust and close more deals and get more bookings. We also have to share readily. Buyer for selling is about transparency and always empowering buyers with information. So there used to be a time when sellers had all the info, they had all the data, and customers used to have to go to buyers to actually find things out. But now, obviously, with the internet, now more than ever, your customer, your buyer, is super informed. So we have to give them as much as possible. We've got to be transparent, open, honest, full disclosure, give them everything they need. So what does that mean? Make sure you've got an awesome demo reel. Okay, make sure you've got a great show reel, you've got a YouTube channel, you've got some videos on there, you've got a great blog, you've got a podcast. You've got to have something that demonstrates your expertise and your credibility. All right? Now, hands up, how many of you have a YouTube channel right now? How many of you have a YouTube channel? Awesome. Well done for the handful of the two. How many of you have a podcast? Show of hands. Ooh, not too many. How many of you are consistently sharing content on LinkedIn, let's say at least once a week? Show of hands. If you're sharing content on LinkedIn at least once a week. Okay, my friends. I didn't see a whole lot of hands. Now, that's good news because that means there's room for improvement. <laughs> okay, there's room for improvement. If you really want to get more engagements, you want to book more speaking talks and training, for example, you've got to be seen as a subject matter expert. You've got to be seen as an authority. You've got to be seen as the go-to person in your space. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by sharing information, content marketing. Have a great blog, have a great website, have a great YouTube channel. Look, everyone here in the room should have a killer YouTube channel because guess what? We're all speakers and trainers. So we are in the visual medium. So you got to be selling yourself on video. That's a huge thing that I want you to take away from my talk here today. And I want you to commit to doing that. Pump out tons of content so that you become the indisputable choice in your category. Okay, tip number three, solve, don't sell. It's all about problem solving, not selling. A buyer first seller measures success in the problems they solve as well as the products they sell, okay? But many of us are just trying to book engagements, right? Like, oh, you need a speaker? Okay, I can do it for X amount or bring it, or, you know, like book me, book me, book me. But it's less about selling and more about solving. What problems do you solve for your customers? So here's a little tip. What I invite you to do is to take a look through your CRM, and I hope you all have a CRM, a customer relationship management tool, at the very least a spreadsheet or something, but look through your notes of your last 10 customers, your last 10 engagements, and then want you please to look through the notes, look through the conversations. If you recorded them on Zoom, listen to the recordings and notice what were the problems they presented what was the situation they were in before they reached out to you? What were the opportunities they were hoping to uncover? What were the challenges, potholes, pitfalls, hurdles, obstacles, roadblocks they were trying to avoid before they reached out to you? And then ultimately, what were the outcomes you helped them achieve? I want you to think about that, research it, write it down, build little case studies, and then demonstrate to your next prospective customer that you're there not to sell to them, but to help solve their problems. Hands up if this is making sense, everybody. Am I clear? Is this good stuff? You finding this valuable? Awesome. I want everybody to go back and start working on this right away. And then the last two things I want to share with you is this. You've got to deliver value. Obviously, you've got to crush it. Rock it on the stage. It's critical to see the relationship through long after a deal is signed. So it's not just about booking the engagement, but do you show up 
on time, full of energy, deliver on all your promises, stick around for Q&A afterwards, mingle, network with people, hand out books, sign autographs, take some selfies, do whatever you gotta do to demonstrate some value long after the event. Sign them up for some post-session follow-up emails. So after all of our speaking engagements and training, we put all of our learners through a three-month post-session sequence where we send them every week articles, blog posts, slide decks, infographics, videos, podcast recordings every week that will reinforce what was covered in our session. So how much value are you delivering? That's about having a buyer first mindset. And then finally, last but certainly not least, is you've got to earn their trust. Well, how do we do that? Well, a buyer seller, a buyer first seller develops long-term trust by always acting in the buyer's best interest. So it's not about what I want to sell, but am I helping my customer to achieve their goals? So over my shoulder here is a full suite of programs that we offer and solutions that we have. Whether it's training, coaching, our e-learning program, books, train the trainer, whatever. We've got so many things to offer. But I can't dump these all on customers just to try to close a deal. It has to make sense in the context of their situation. So it all comes full circle to learn and then define. It starts with active listening. That will allow us to earn your trust and to deliver great value. So here's what I want to do right now before we move to a Q&A, because I want to take all your questions so that you leave here today with the, the, the answers to your most burning questions. Here's what I want you to do. Out of this list that I shared here on the screen, I want you please to speak with the people at your table. Now, if you're joining remotely, you can type it in the chat. But if you're there in the Dorset Ballroom, I want you please to chat with the people at your table and share with each other which of these items that I shared resonate most strongly with you and what do you feel you need to focus on right away. All right, I'm going to give you three minutes to discuss at your tables starting now. Go for it. One more minute, one more minute.
So here's what we're going to do right now. I trust that you've had an opportunity to share with everybody at your table and that you've come away with at least one action item, one takeaway, one thing that you're going to focus on right away. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take questions from the room. All right. Now let me do a quick time check here. If someone can let me know how much time do we have left in my session so I know how to space this out. We're now at 2.25 Malaysia time. We've got 10 minutes? Excellent. Thank you. I want each table, each table, for you to pick one question. I want you to share with each other. I'm going to give you two minutes to each come up to come up with one question per table. So I'm going to answer a question from each of the tables, all right? I want you to have two minutes to come up with your, your biggest, most burning question. What's the number one challenge you're facing, question you want answered, or topic you want me to, to talk about right now? All right, you've got two minutes starting now. Go for it. What sales-related questions do you have? How do I book engagements? How do I negotiate fees? How do I differentiate from other people? Whatever it is, I want you to pick a question. In you know, two minutes. Now, you can give them a ballpark, 
Well, our programs typically range between X and Y, but in order for me to provide you with an accurate proposal and a quotation, I need to speak with the person who initiated this request. And you've got to hold tight and strong to that. All right, my friend, I hope you found that useful. Can we please give Tim a big round of applause for the question? That was awesome, bro. Thank you. Uh, hi, Tom. This is the second question. Second question, all right. All right. Uh, so a lot of us are basically a small, uh, maybe we don't have a large organization set up. So my question to you would be, how do we manage this post-training follow-up when we have limited resources uh, in people or either automation set up? How do we manage this okay, better? Awesome. Great question. So the question is, how, how do you, if you've got a small organization, how do you do the post-training follow-up? So it all starts with having great content. That's number one. You've got to have some great content. Do you have an article? Do you have a blog post? You know, do you have um, a YouTube channel? Are you posting stuff on LinkedIn, for example? So come up with, even if it's just four or five pieces of content that are useful, then you just share it with them. If you don't have automation, that's okay. Just put a reminder in your calendar to send them an email every week of, hey, please check out this article. Please read this blog post. Please listen to this podcast recording. Please watch this video I recorded. You can even start creating content specifically for that customer. So if you don't have content, please let this be a call to action for you to start building content. Use your next customer, use your next engagement as your beta test to actually start creating follow-up content, then archive it, just save it, and then just repurpose it every time you've got a new customer. Because hopefully, you're a, hopefully you're not a jack of all trades, master of none. Hopefully you are a specialist in one area and you only speak on you know, one, maybe two at the most topics. So you've got great content, build that content library and start sharing it with your customers. Either through automation if you've got it, if you don't, just do it manually. Hope that helps, helps with my friend. Awesome. Please give a big round of applause for that question because that's an awesome question. I know who's right. next. Arriva, arriva, arriva. Hey, all right. Very good. How to sell or get into Singapore? <laughs> how, is, how, to sell, how, how to get business in Singapore? Yes. And Canada. <laughs> and Canada. <laughs> okay. The first thing you need to do is decide do you actually want to work in those markets? And why do you want to work in those markets, okay? We're, for you in Malaysia, working in Singapore is different. It's also easy in terms of logistics and travel. Working in Canada, well, that's a completely different thing. So you've got to be able to demonstrate your credibility. That's number one. Why should they engage you over somebody else? Why should they choose you over a local Singapore speaker? Or if you try to work in Canada, what value do you bring to those Canadian businesses that they don't have there or anywhere else in the world? So it's not about the destination, it's about the value that you bring. So think about how do you stand apart from every other speaker or every other trainer? That's number one. Number two, what I would suggest you do, and it's great that you're a member of MAPS, which means you're part of the GSF, the Global Speakers Federation, reach out to some of your fellow GSF member speakers like myself at APSS or CAPS, the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers in Canada. I'm a member of both. Reach out to some fellow members and ask them, hey, who do you know in those markets that might be interested in having me speak or train on my particular topic? So the easiest thing for you would probably be that one-on-one -on -one introduction through someone that you know, someone like me, for example, or any other members of um, APSS in Singapore or CAPS in Canada. Or you need to start hopping on LinkedIn, for example, reach out to some L&D, HR people, you know, C-suite people in those respective markets and start building uh, relationships and starting a new conversation with them. But I'll tell you, start with uh, your GSF member associations first, fellow members, uh, and then maybe hop on LinkedIn and try to connect with some people in those markets and slowly but surely find your way into Singapore and Canada. Hope that helps, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Question five, social media. Which one has the lethal possibility that you can gain the client because at the moment as you you could see not many among us have the podcast and the things that you've asked 
So many are in probably Facebook, some trying the other bits and pieces. Where do you think we should be investing our time to develop our social media presence fast enough for people to know who you are, what you do, yep. and how you can deliver? Love the question. Uh, and then hands up, how many of you sell to companies? How many of you are in the B2B space? Hands up if you sell to companies. You all need to be on LinkedIn, big time. Get active, get busy, build up your profile. Make, make sure you've got a nice profile pic, make sure you've got a banner on there, make sure you're sharing some content. You're gonna notice a theme that I've shared here today. You have to be seen as an expert. So whether you're doing post-session follow-up emails, whether you're trying to sell into the Singapore or the Canada market, whether or not you're trying to um, uh, you know, get more customers in the B2B space, you have got to build your social media presence. How do you do it? LinkedIn is by far the number one place where you're going to find HR leaders, L&D people, where you can actually find out who is in charge of training and development at a particular company. So you can do account-based selling, account-based marketing, and you can start sharing some content that's relevant to them. Start thinking about what are some articles that I need to write. If you've written a book, you've got so much content already there, just take excerpts of that and start dripping that on social media. Be posting on LinkedIn at least once a week. I post every day or every two days, maybe three, it depends on how it works out. But at least two or three times a week, I'm posting content. How active are you all? Step up. This is where people go. Our customers go online to find people like us. They're going on Google search. They're going on YouTube and looking at demo videos, and they're hopping on LinkedIn. They're there. So connect with them, build relationships, and that's going to help you, um, you know, get more opportunities in your pipeline, which will allow you to close more deals. But look, if you can't be found and you can't be seen, you can't be engaged. I hope that helps, my friend. Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Look, do we have time for a final question? I think I saw a two-minute two uh, warning there. How are we doing? Ten seconds, okay. I hope you found the buyer first mindset tips that I share, the buyer first philosophy important. I also hope you found it valuable, the tips that I've shared to answer these questions. If there's one thing I can leave you with, every single person here right now, you all have a story to tell, you all have some knowledge and expertise, and you all have a passion for what you do. Now make sure you get out there and make sure that everybody in your addressable market knows who you are, knows what you do, and knows how to find you. So when you leave this conference, this convention here today, I want to make sure that you get your handphones out and you start producing content right away so that you can stand apart from everybody else. And if you do that, I guarantee, I'm convinced, that you're going to position yourself as the go-to person in your space and book more engagement. I'm Tom Abbott, everybody, and it's been a thrill to join you at the convention. Thanks so much, my friends. All the best and have a great day.